Hello everyone, in this session we will discuss impairment losses when it comes to discontinued operation. Let's first discuss impairment losses. Impairment losses occur when the carrying amount of an asset, its book value, exceeds its recoverable amount. What does that mean? This means the asset cannot recover its book value, indicating a loss in utility. The recoverable amount is measured by estimating the future value of cash flows from this asset. How much can this asset generate in future cash flow? It's usually also equivalent to its fair value, not necessarily, but usually it is. For example, if an asset is recorded at 100,000 on the books and its recoverable amount is only 70,000, well, what can we say? We say that this asset is overvalued by 30,000. In such cases, the principle of conservatism and accounting requires us to recognize the losses as soon as they are identified. And this is done through an impairment loss, which reflects the asset diminished utility or value. Now, what could lead to an impairment loss? Various factors, rapid technological advancement, economic shifts, changes in regulation, change in taste, could be anything. The goal for accountant is to make sure the assets are not overstated, overvalued on the financial statements. In this discussion, we will focus specifically on impairment losses related to discontinued operation rather than property, plant, and equipment. The underlying concept remains the same. Now, in the prior session, we discussed discontinued operation in depth. Make sure you know this. We will do a quick review before we start. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's review what do we report typically under discontinued operation. Well, we report results of operation of the component, and this should be a review for you. What does that mean? So when we discontinued an operation, again, I assume you have the basic knowledge of it, we would include revenues, expenses, gains, losses, that are directly associated with the component being discontinued. And we would report this, hopefully you know this, net of tax. Don't worry, we'll work an example, but this is a review. That's one thing we would report, the result of operation. Whether we have a gain or a loss for that segment, for that segment that we are discontinuing and being reported separately. Then in the year the segment is actually sold, we would either report a gain or a loss on the disposal of the segment. Well. Either we had a profit or a loss from actually selling the this component. And this should be a review, and we would report this number net of tax. The third component that I did not discuss yet, which we will need to discuss in this topic, because I assumed for simplicity in the prior session that don't worry about impairment loss. Now we're going to be discussing impairment loss. So think about we decided to sell an asset in year X1. So this asset becomes held for sale this division or this segment or whatever you want to call it this geographical area is considered held for sale when it's being held for sale we may not sell it until 20x2 who knows we might may take till 20x3 hopefully not right but when 20x2 ends we have to determine if we can recover the book value of this division if not, we have an impairment loss. Now we're looking at the impairment loss for the whole division. So this involves recognizing only losses due to the components decrease in value. We're looking at the component overall. If its recoverable value is less than its book value, we have to do what? Recognize an impairment loss. And any subsequent gain of the value increase again, but only up to the amount of previously recorded losses. So we put this discontinued operation for sale. The book value of the whole division, the book value of the whole division is 10 million. We can recover the, I'm gonna put the fair market is 8 million. What does that mean? It means we have 2 million fair value minus, you know, cost to sell. So we have 2 million of losses. Although we haven't sold the division, there's 2 million of losses. Why? Because the fair value of that division went down. Why? Because there's no demand for it. Something happened. The division lost utility. Now what happened is for if for one reason or another, this product, the product of that division becomes marketable again, and the fair value jumps to 15 million. Just make it, make it uh, extreme. Well, can you recover this 2 million 
you can recover yes up to two million up to what you recorded in losses so if the if you are able to recover you can recover up to that amount so when the component value decrease an impairment loss is recorded this loss is calculated as the difference between the book value and the fair value minus the cost to sell which is how much can you get for it if the value of the component further decline then year after year if you have this asset additional impairment losses are recorded in the same manner until you sell it now what happened again if subsequent there was a subsequent increase in fair value if the fair value of the component later increase again is recognized up to the previous impairment losses so in the past you computed in total 5 million in impairment losses the only thing you can recover is 5 million no more than that well if you have more gains well sell it and recognize the gain the other thing you want to know about asset held for sale is we don't depreciate them when management decide to dispose of a component any asset within this component are not subject to depreciation and I hope this makes sense because we depreciate assets that are in operation once we put a division for sale it's being held for sale this means that the asset value will not be further reduced over time through this accounting process you know we, we only depreciate operating asset same one when we put a specific particular asset if we put a piece of asset like a long-term property plan equipment a truck a vehicle a building once it's held for sale it's no longer depreciated or amortized why because the definition of depreciation is you depreciate an asset that you operate well yes you still operate this asset but you are holding this division for sale it's no longer considered in quote operating so don't don't depreciate but if you have an impairment loss just like the asset you will reduce the value of this division that this component so what is the amount a component that's classified as held for sale must be measured at the lower of two values the carrying value or the fair value less less cost to sell simply put we look at the carrying value this is the book value of the component representing its original cost minus any accumulated depreciation or amortization so the book value of the component I told you if it's if the book value is 10 million the fair value is 8 well guess what we have to report it at 8 and take a loss of how much 2 2 million now cost to sell means including legal commission other expenses directly related to this transaction and the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example so let's take a look at the cycling division of fitness world so fitness world is the main company they have many division one of them is the cycling division and this division has been losing money the board of directors decided on March 31st year one so be careful we're gonna have a couple years here to dispose of the cycling division once we dispose of the cycling division March 1st we have to account for the revenues expenses operating expenses for the cycling division separately as of 1 1 January 1st the first of the beginning of the year for that division so the carrying value of the cycling division when we decided to dispose of it is 5 million the fair value lost the cost to sell is three do we have an impairment loss and the answer is yes we do have an impairment loss of 2 million great after month of negotiation the divisions net asset are sold on August 31st year two so notice we started so let me show you what happened here this is year one and this is year two we decided to sell this division March year one so we have year one to account for and we did not sell it until sold August of year two August of year two March of year one so so the first thing you need to know as far as we're concerned for year one any all revenues and all expenses for year one will be reported as discontinued operation so this period here is discontinued operation but we did not decide till March 1st of year one it doesn't matter we'll start from the beginning of the year and the division was sold for 2.8 million a year later now the cycling division has continuing losses in year two of two hundred and fifty thousand dollar per month this is the this is their losses per month in year two so in year two every month they were incurring losses of two hundred and fifty thousand fitness world income tax rate is 21 percent for years one and two and assume that word fitness world income from continuing operation is six million in year one and 6.5 in year two so we are giving income from continuing operation because we're going to list discontinued operation right after income from continuing operation 
and they gave us the trial balance specifically for the cycling division because what we need to do now we need to compute we need to compute the operating income or loss for the cycling division for year one and year one means what January 1st till December 31st this is a calendar year company but they did not decide until March it doesn't matter you start January 1st so let's first compute what happened in year one in year one because remember they did not sell it in year two so the continuing losses would include it in the discontinued operation in year one so here's year one in year one we're gonna take we're gonna take revenues 18 million minus cost of goods sold for the cycling division minus the freight out minus the commission minus advertising minus insurance expense minus salaries expense minus depreciation if my math is right the cycling division reported 2.9 million of losses losses from operation for that period for year one this is for year one now what do we have to do we're going to report this number net of tax how do we report the net of tax? We'll take the loss times one minus the 21%. So the, the losses net of tax is 2,291,000. It means we have a savings. What is the savings? Well, the savings is the tax rate. If we have 2.9 million of losses and the tax rate is 21%, we saved 609,000 on our taxes. Hold on a second. You're having losses, then you're having tax savings. Why? Because the loss reduces your taxes. As you reduce your taxes, you you saved on yourself 609,000. Uh, 609,000. So if we take 2.9 million minus, minus 609, let's do this, to show you the net of tax effect, because the loss was 2.9 million, that's the gross amount, minus 609,000 you guessed it net of tax is 2,291,000 this is the amount that we report net of tax so this is because we had a tax savings now that's fine so we have to report the amount net of tax now did we sell that division in year one well if we sold the division in year one everything would have been good we would report the loss or the gain for that division net of tax but we did not sell it in, until year two remember what I showed you here it was not sold until year two so at the end of year one what do we have to do now we have to report any impairment loss do we have an impairment loss yes we do we have an impairment loss of two million remember the fair value minus cost to sell is three million the book value is five we have two million now the impairment loss will also have to report the net of tax i have to take the two million times one minus the tax rate my impairment loss is one million five hundred and eighty thousand so for year one how do i present things on the balance sheet for year one i present income from continuing operation of six million which is given to us then i'm going to have loss from operate operation of discontinued operation net of tax 2,291,000. Loss from impairment of discontinued operation out of tax, 1,580,000. 6 million minus those two losses will give us a net income of 2,129,000. Now, obviously, if I sold that division in year one, I will not have loss from impairment because when I sell it, I'll either have a gain or a loss. I don't have to worry about loss of impairment. Now, let's look at year two. In year two, they told us your losses are $250,000 per month. We operated the business for eight months because we sold it in August. Therefore, our losses gross is 2 million. This is loss from operation. Now I have 2 million twice. This is loss from operation year two. So don't confuse this 2 million. I should have used a different number with the <laughs> impairment loss gross. So this is the loss from operation in year two. Net, net of tax will take the 2 million times one minus the tax rate and you need to know how net of tax is computed I discussed this very much in depth in the prior recording when I discuss discontinued operation therefore loss from operation net of tax 1,580,000 we're not done yet why because in year two let me, let me show you what happened in year two in year two we actually sold the division we sold the division in year two for 2.8 million great now if we sold the division for 2.8 million what is our loss what is our gain if there is any loss or any gain how much is the loss how much is the gain you remember the value was 5 million uh, the book value was 5 million after the end of year one you wrote down you wrote down the value to 3 million and you recorded a loss of 
two million in impairment loss, then you reported it at you know this is for year one. This has this this is not the same two million. Okay, this is year one impairment loss. So when you sold that, when you sold it, you sold for. 2.8 million this is how much you sold it for when you sold it for 2.8 million you would show this and you would compare the 2.8 to the 3 million not to the 5 million because you already took the losses you already took 2 million of losses you compare the 2.8 to the 3 million it means you have losses gross of 200,000 you guessed it I'm gonna report the loss net of tax 200,000 times 1 minus the tax rate my loss net of tax that's it one that's it 158 I'm done with this I'm done means I sold that division I don't need to repair to report impairment if I sold it if I if I did not sell it by year two I'd have to determine whether it's still worth 3 million or not looks like it was worth 2.8 million if I did not sell it and it was worth 2.8 million I would have to again report a loss an impairment loss so this loss will not be lost on disposal it will be the impairment loss of this much but let's assume for the sake of illustration you know Again, let's be extreme and somehow the cycling division, everybody wanted to cycle in the US and around the world and the value of that division went up to 6 million. Went up to 6 million. Well, the book value of it is 5. I can recover I can recover the 2 million from the prior impairment loss. I have the right to recover that. That's fine. Okay? But let's assume it went up to 4 million. Well, I could recover a million. So I can recover up to 5 million but it kept on the value of that division went down now how do I report this on the balance sheet for year two again income from continuing operation 6.5 million this was given to you loss from operating the business year two we kept incurring losses aren't we glad we got rid of that division 1 million 580 net of tax loss from sale I dispose of it and the net amount was 158 I had some tax savings on both of these, the loss from operation. My net income is 4762000 assuming my math is right. So what we did in this recording is we looked at loss, impairment loss when it comes to discontinued operation. Now, impairment loss is something that you have to deal with, with property, plant, and equipment, with intangible asset. The rules are very similar, very, very similar, similar. Same concept. If you have an asset, if you have anything, and that's something that asset lost value permanently what do you have to do you have to write it down we call it an impairment loss the uh, the asset lost utility the asset cannot recover its cash flow the asset cannot the, the fair value dropped substantially don't keep it at book value it's misleading it's misleading the investors it's misleading the users write it down what should you do now go to farhat lectures look at multiple choice resources lectures true false you need to understand these topics inside out accounting is worth it study hard good luck and of course stay safe